and welcome to Flagstaff TV. Today we are joined by Sam Wahab, who is the head of oil and gas at SP Angel. Thank you very much for joining us today, Sam. Hi there. Hi, Catherine. Thank you. Sam, could you start by outlining the investment case for sound energy for us? Yes, absolutely. So uh, earlier on this week, we initiated coverage in the company with a buy recommendation at a target price of six and a half pence per share. But it's also worth noting that um, we also provided a full company valuation, um, which outlines a, a 33 pence per share, which includes their expiration acreage. Um, so reinforcing the, the basis for this investment case is that uh, a new management team has come into the company and, and shifted the strategy from what has been an exploration led historically to more of a development and production led strategy uh, onshore Morocco. So um, looking at the company as a whole, it's, um, it, it, it has the largest uh, on, onshore acreage position in Morocco, all predominantly gas, uh, which feeds into the country's energy transition to decarbonize their, uh, their energy outlook in the near term. Um, and in terms of what they're planning to do, there's now a clear pathway set out by this management team to monetize it its core asset, which is a Tendrora uh, gas field onshore the country. Um, that would be on a, a two-phase approach. The first phase, which should um, start next year, will include a mini LNG facility, whereby the company will be uh, distribu distributing around 10 million cubic feet of gas a day to uh, the, the growing industrial market within the country. And then following on from that would be uh, the, the phase two, which is where we see the, the real value um, in the long-term future of this company. And that would include um, the construction of a central processing facility and uh, 120 uh, kilometer pipeline which will then feed into the core Moroccan um, gas pipeline and that will that will really sort of push the, the gas to power market within the country and really really leads sound energy to be a material gas uh, exporter uh, within Morocco so it's uh, it, it's a very bright future for them that that second phase will will see them uh, produce at rates of upwards of 66 million uh, cubic feet per day. Uh, the pipeline itself is 20 inches, so it could potentially it transport up to 230 million uh, cubic feet per day. So there's a huge amount of capacity there. And I think that's really sort of will be born from the company, you know, feeding in other discoveries, which they do have a, a number of within their, within their acreage position. Thank you, Sam. And the company recently restructured its bond position. What are the implications of this? That's a, that's a very good question, actually, and that came up um, quite recently. So uh, initially, the company had 28.8 million euros uh, as, a, as a bond position, and that was due to mature in, in June of this year. Um, so the new management team has successfully come in and, uh, and renegotiated that with the note holders. Um, what they've done is they've effectively pushed that out to June 2027. So there's a, a, a longer lead time there, and it sort of corresponds with the new strategy, which I which I just mentioned from the first question. Um, and they've reduced the coupon or cash interest payable from five percent to two percent, which is obviously very good news. And and also that will that three percent will then be rolled up and paid at uh, maturity. They've also reduced the actual outstanding position from uh, by three and a half million euros. They issued 141 million shares at a, just a touch over two pence per share, so quite attractive. Um, rates there and reduce that by three and a half million down to 25.3 million euros so um, it reduces their exposure um, in return from that the, the bondholders do get um, around 100 million warrants but uh, but also the, the company can redeem that, that whole bond position as we see you know as I mentioned in the phase two process there'll be a lot of cash being generated by the company and they, they may look to reduce that exposure um, before the term ends. so that, that's particularly good news for them we've seen that sort of correspond through to share price um, I mean it's 50 percent up year to date but a lot of that has been borne through from from the successful renegotiation of this bond and I suppose that's you know it adds two elements to that first of all is, is the support of the new leadership team but also the validation of this renewed strategy that's, that's coming in it, it, it really shows that Everyone is on board in terms of stakeholders, uh, equity and debt providers as well, into this new strategy, and they really do see the long-term potential of this company. Thank you, Sam. Now, aside from Chandrara, what other assets does the company have that it could monetize? Yeah, well, I mean, we've focused on Tendrara uh, quite a bit on this, and I suppose that the research initiation does. I mean, um, most of the valuation is $173 million, which is phase one and phase two at Tendrara rolled up. But you're right, there is a number of other assets. Um, most mostly that, that actually uh, surrounds the, the Tendrara field. So they have Grace Tendrara, um, we, and as well as uh, an, an Annual, which is uh, another asset nearby, both of which have 47.5% interest, similar interest stakes to um, 
to sort of the central Tendara field with with Slumberger and uh, and Onheim, the state energy company, taking the rest of the, uh, the the equity position. But in terms of the actual potential of these assets, it's it's absolutely huge. Um, Greater Tendara, for example, and I'm only talking about prospect leads here, not not concepts. It has upwards of 5.4 trillion cubic feet of um, of potential there. That that's all gas uh, annual, which is uh, which also nearby as upwards of 8.4 trillion cubic feet of gas. And um, and then down to the southwest of the country, they have a you know a, what I would say is a more mature uh, field because there's wells being drilled on it is City Moktar where they have a, a 75% working interest in that license that has 8.9 TCF of uh, of prospective resources, um, and that's that's again based on just um, our concepts and uh, prospects and leads. But in terms of where they'll look to to produce from, I mean, similar to the whole sort of geological landscape, it's it's mainly from the Triassic and the Paleozoic uh, structures, which which they have obviously some very good experience from from uh, from you know the drilling a, a number of wells at Tendara. So uh, it's a, it's it's good news for them. And in terms of how to finance drilling, as I mentioned, phase one and phase two are are, are throwing off a lot of cash. There's opportunities to reinvest there. But you know, particularly with City Mokhtar as well, with 75% working interest, I wouldn't be, you know, there'll be no shortage of, of uh, people teaming up looking to, to farm into those those um, those assets, especially once once uh, sound energy is is sort of uh, formed the basis of a, of a material gas producer in the country. Sam, last question for today: What is the operating environment like in Morocco for energy companies? It's actually very attractive, and we we have seen a number of other London listed players um, in the country. SDX Energy is one of them. Predator Oil and Gas is another, but uh, Sound Energy has, has been there for a long time since they picked up the Trendara field from from Fastnet a number of years ago and, and developed it um, from there. In terms of what it's like to operate in Morocco, there's there's a huge push to to sort of remove. You know, ensure the self-sufficiency of, of gas supply in the country. At the moment, they import around 90% of, of their gas from Algeria. Um, that makes them the biggest importer of gas in, in North Africa. So there is a big uh, move to, 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 to push them away from, from that and have self-security of, of energy supply. Um, in terms of gas pricing, that's very robust. It's, at the moment, we model around $8 uh, dollars per million cubic feet. Um, it's, it's, around, it's between seven and nine, so you can see where, where we've arrived at that age. Um, and that's robust because the, you know, there is an incentivization for domestic players to produce gas. Um, also, the fiscal terms are good. They've got a 10-year ten, ten tax holiday, which some will benefit from uh, once, once Tendrara is in production. And uh, also, the, they have a, a, a good relationship with Onheim, which is the, the state energy company, where, which, is a, which is a partner in, in Tendrara as well as a number of other of, other of the company's fields. So there is a, there's a, a clear pathway here for, for the country to, to really boost their energy transition, which they, they, they plan to do to decarbonize the, uh, the, the country's energy outlook. And, um, and, and obviously gas feeds into that quite well. So that puts sound in, in, a, in a really good attractive position to, to take hold and become a real, a, a real sustainable energy producer in the country. Thank you, Sam, for your time today. Thank you. And thank you for watching Flagstaff TV.